Good morning, everybody. Uh, in this video, we're going to work on simplifying radicals. Now, this is a, a skill that is a, a pretty basic, but also is something that a lot of people just don't really understand. Um, but hopefully this will kind of clear things up for you. Uh, I want to start out with just a, a easy kind of square root of 8. Um, so the square root of 8 does not have a nice square root. Um, but it does have a nice square root inside of it, which is 4. And so the idea of simplifying radicals is to rewrite a radical with the smallest possible number inside the radical and then pull out whatever we can on the outside. And the first step is to recognize that 8 is actually the same as 4 times 2. So uh, I'm just going to rewrite that as the square root of 4 times 2. Uh, if you have things that are multiplied inside your radical, you are allowed to write it as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And then now I know that the square root of 4 is actually 2 square roots of 2. That is the simplified form of the radical. That's it. Now let's try another one. Say we have a pretty large number, like the square root of 300. What you want to do is you want to think about what nice perfect square goes into 300. If you don't know your perfect squares, it might help to kind of review 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, that's 6 squared, 36, 7 squared, 8 squared, then 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100. We'll just do 11 as 121 also. So think about that list, and I'm noticing that 100 goes into 300 evenly to be square root of 100 times the square root of 3, which is 10 roots of 3. Um, if you have uh, something where you have a uh, square root in the bottom, that happens occasionally. Uh, say you have 5 over the square root of 3. Um, the way you simplify that, we typically don't like to have the radical in the bottom of the fraction. Uh, you would multiply by root 3 over root 3. This becomes 5 root 3. And then this is just the square root of, so just like we broke these up, if you have two square roots with numbers, you can rewrite it as this. So it's the square root of 9. 3 times 3 is 9. And then that in terms is uh, 5 roots of 3 over 3, just like that. Let's try a few more. Okay. Let's try something like this. <clears throat> now, um, what you might recognize immediately is we have that square root in the bottom, uh, which we don't want. Um, because we have squares in the top also, I'm going to just choose to kind of wait on that. Uh, in this previous problem I did, we had a square root in the bottom, um, but we just had a whole number on top, so I just went straight for getting rid of the square root in the bottom. If you have square roots in other places, it might be good just to kind of simplify this all first. And I'm noticing the square root of 16, uh, that is 4, so just throwing that out there. Um, what I'm going to do here is, uh, I'll just write this as 4 times the square root of 10 over the square root of 5 to start out, just to get rid of that square root of 16. And then I'm going to write this as 4 times, instead of the square root of 10 over the square root of 5, <clears throat> I'm going to write this as the square root of 10 over 5. That's another rule that you can follow when you're dealing with square roots and division. Just like the multiplication allowed me to take two square roots and uh, multiply the insides like this, the square root of 4 uh, times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4 times 2. With division, it works exactly the same way, and it's just going to be 4 times uh, 10 over 5 is just 2. So that's a kind of a nice, uh, easy case. Uh, let's do uh, one more. Uh, we'll do uh, the square root of 80 times the square root of 2 and uh, just kind of start with that. Now, uh, I'm thinking about these and, you know, I'm not, I may not recognize a nice square root that goes in automatically. Um, and uh, you're always welcome to multiply these together and make this the square root of 160, if that helps you to see um, kind of 
what to expect more easily. And uh, I'm looking at 160, and I notice that's actually 16 times 10. And then uh, this is going to be the square root of 4. I'm just square root of, I'm just, I'm sorry, it's just 4 roots of 10. So uh, just like that. Um, now, sometimes uh, you might have a, a higher root, and those become really challenging sometimes. Um, so I'm going to just do uh, an example of the cube root of 108, okay? And, you know, it may, you may not know your cube roots all that well, you know? One cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125, and they keep going. Um, but you may not automatically recognize if there's a nice cube root that goes into 108. So what you can do is if, if all else fails, break it into prime factors. Let me show you what that means. Uh, I'm just gonna write 108. That is the same as two times 54. Two is a prime number. And then 54 is actually two times 27. And 27 is 3 times 9. And then 9 is 3 times 3. So really, this cube root of 108 is equal to uh, the cube root of 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. So we're looking at a cube root. We're wondering what is multiplied times itself 3 times. And you can see now that there's three threes. So if you want to take the cube root of 3 times 3 times 3 out, it's just going to be 3 times the cube root of 2 times 2, which is 3 cube roots of 4. Now, that one would have been tough to do otherwise. Um, so let's maybe just try one more like that. Cube root of 500. Um, so... Again, drawing a blank here, uh, it's kind of a, a tough um, problem to work with. Uh, I'm guessing 500 can be written at least as 5 times 100, because 5 is a nice prime number. And then 100 can actually be written as 5 times, five times 20, because 5 times 20 is 100. And then uh, 20 is 5 times 4. And then 4 is actually 2 times 2. So this is the prime factorization of the cube root of 500. 5 times 5 times 5 times 2 times 2. And now I see, look, there's three fives in there. So that the cube root of 5 times 5 times 5 is just 5. And then you just get this left over, which is just 5 cube roots of four. So anyway, uh, to sum this up, with, uh, with, with any kind of root, you can break them out into pieces. You know, if you have, you know, 500, five times 100, or five times five times five times two times two is also fine. Any way that helps you break this up and so that you can take whatever can come out of the, ra the radical out, um, well, you know, is a good plan. And, uh, you know, don't be scared to do it in really small pieces. You know, if 500 is hard, um, you know, you could have recognized this is 125 times 4, and 125 is a perfect cube. It's 5 cubed, and, you know, there you go. But, you know, most of us probably wouldn't recognize that. So this is a way to kind of make that happen anyway. I hope this helps with, uh, the roots. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.